If you made a neural network on the surface of Mars, you'd be a long, long way away from me. That's the truth. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about Neural Networks Part 6, Cross Entropy. Note, this stack quest assumes that you already understand the main ideas behind neural networks, the main ideas behind backpropagation, and softmax and argmax. If not, check out the quests. The links are in the description below. Now, before we get started with cross entropy, let me remind you that in the stack quest on backpropagation main ideas, we had a simple neural network with a single output that, in theory, could give us any output value. In cases like this, we commonly use the sum of the squared residuals to determine how well the neural network fits the data. Bam! Now, when we have a neural network with multiple output values, we often run the data through argmax to make the output easy to interpret. But because argmax has a terrible derivative, we can't use it for backpropagation. So, in order to train the neural network, we use the softmax function. And the softmax output values are predicted probabilities between 0 and 1. And when the output is restricted to values between 0 and 1, we often use something called cross entropy to determine how well the neural network fits the data. Cross entropy is one of those things that sounds super fancy and complicated, but when it comes to neural networks, is super simple. To see how super simple it is, let's start with this super simple training dataset that has petal and sepal widths for known or observed iris species. Now let's plug in the petal and sepal widths for the first observed species, Setosa and run the numbers through the neural network, and run the raw output values through the softmax function. Beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep. Now, because we know the data are from Setosa, the cross entropy is the negative log, base E, of the softmax output value for Setosa, 0.57. In other words, we plug the predicted probability for the observed species into the cross entropy function. Note, if you have seen the cross entropy function before, this version may look different to you. The difference is because neural networks only need a simplified form of this general equation. In this summation, m is the number of output classes. In this case, m equals 3 because we have three output classes, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Thus, if we expanded the summation, we would get one term for Setosa, one term for Versicolor, and one term for Virginica. Now, because we know that the data from the first row comes from Setosa, the observed probability that the data comes from Setosa is one and the observed probabilities that the data came from Versicolor and Virginica are both zero. And that means the terms for Versicolor and Virginica go away. Poof. And we are left with negative one times the log of the predicted probability for Setosa. Anyway, going back to where we plugged in the predicted probability for Setosa, when we do the math, we get 0 0.56. Bam. So let's add the predicted probability for Setosa to the table and the corresponding cross entropy value. Now let's plug in the petal and sepal widths for the second observed species, Virginica, and run the numbers through the neural network and run the raw output values through the softmax function. Now, because we know the data are from Virginica, we plug the predicted probability for Virginica, 0.58, into the cross entropy equation. And the cross entropy value for Virginica, the second row in the training data, is 0.54. Likewise, we plug in the measurements on the third row, 
run the numbers through the neural network and softmax, and because we know the data are from VersiColor, we plug the predicted probability for VersiColor, 0.52, into the cross entropy equation. And the cross entropy for VersiColor is 0.65. Now, to get the total error for the neural network, all we do is add up the cross entropy values. In this case, we get 1.75 as the total error. And we can use backpropagation to adjust the weights and biases and hopefully minimize the total error. Double BAM! Now, at this point, you might be wondering, if I can calculate these probabilities for each observed species, then I can calculate residuals, the difference between the observed probabilities and the predicted probabilities. For example, for the first row in the data, the observed species is setosa, and thus, the observed probability that the petal and sepal measurements came from setosa is 1, and the predicted probability is 0.57. Thus, the residual is 0.43. And if we can calculate a residual, we can square it. And ultimately, that means we can calculate the sum of the squared residuals. So, you may be wondering why we don't just calculate the squared residuals instead of the cross entropy. Well, the first thing we do is remember that the softmax function only gives us values between 0 and 1. And if the prediction for Satosa is really good, it will be close to 1. And if the prediction is really terrible, it will be close to 0. In this case, the prediction for Satosa is kind of in the middle. However, we can just plug in values for the predicted probability from 0 to 1 into the cross entropy function and plot the output. The y-axis is the loss, which is a measure of how bad the prediction is. When we use cross entropy, as the prediction gets worse and worse, the loss kind of explodes and gets really, really big. In contrast, if we plug in values for the predicted probability from 0 to 1 into the squared residual, then the change in loss between 0 and 1 is not as large as it is for cross entropy. And you may remember from Neural Networks Part 2, Backpropagation Main Ideas, that the step size for backpropagation depends, in part, on the derivatives of these functions. And the derivative, or slope of the tangent line for cross entropy for a bad prediction will be relatively large compared to the derivative for the same bad prediction with squared residuals. So, when the neural network makes a really bad prediction, cross entropy will help us take a relatively large step towards a better prediction because the slope of the tangent line will be relatively large. Triple BAM! Now, with all this talk about backpropagation, you're probably dying to see how it is done with cross entropy. My friend, the news is good. The next stat quest is all about how to use cross entropy with backpropagation. Bam! Now it's time for some shameless, shameless self-promotion. Self -promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, Check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. All right. Until next time, quest on!